Okay, let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now for this uh, word that I'm about to deliver. And I pray, Father, that you would uh, just bless it as you see fit, Lord. And thank you so much that it's your word. That's not just me delivering some message, Lord. But thank you so much for being right here with us. Help us to receive it in your most wonderful, glorious name. Amen. I'm going to make some room here. i got too much junk. Too much junk here. I need a bigger pulpit or something. Okay, so the title of my message today is What in the World Are We Waiting For? That sounds like a great title, doesn't it? Really? Such a motivational speech. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 to start. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Living in this world, we definitely uh, have our challenges, our trials, tribulation. But along with that, there are so many great rewards and joy that we have. The splend looking at the splendor of creation, who can not be amazed by what God has created? Driving through the gorge, perhaps or camping in woodland. There are many wonderful experiences that we get to be a part of, no doubt. How can someone look at these things and not be at awe at the animals, the stars in the sky? Life can be an adventure and a thrilling quest. And sometimes that should be enjoyed, something that should, should be enjoyed, definitely. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 2.24 that there is nothing better for a person than to eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This, I saw, is from the hand of God. And apart from him, who can eat and drink and who can find enjoyment? Yes, Jesus wants us to be happy. He wants us to enjoy life. Jesus said that he came to give life more abundantly. And his desire is to bless you and me. While we're here on this earth living, that's what he would like for us. He doesn't want us to be miserable. Uh, however uh, wonderful it is for some of us, we're, we're not going to talk you know, about all the suffering that's going on in the world and... and um, all the various trials and the things that go on in this world, if you, if you focus on that, then it might be a real downer. And we have that enough in the 5 o'clock news. But as we try to find our place in this world, the question that would arise was what in the world are we waiting for? And then there's some other questions, though, like where are we going? What's our final destination? What's our purpose? And these are some basic questions that people ask. Just a few questions that we have. So what are we waiting for? I believe some of you, many of you, will know the answer already. Let's look at our Bible verses in the Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit guarantee what is to come. And he says in verse 1, For we know that if the earthly tent, body, is destroyed, that's this body right here, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. 
Remember that Jesus said to the disciples that in my Father's house are many mansions. That's the King James Version. As we get a lot of songs about our mansions in heaven, build mine next to Jesus. Right? But that's not really what he is saying. It's not like Graceland where we'll all be living in these big white houses. But it's, it's really the thought is that it should go like this. Rather, it should say, in my Father's house are many rooms or dwelling places. And we're going to live with God himself. Jesus continues in John 14 to say, I am going to prepare a place for you. This is as the husband would prepare a house, a home for his wife, and then retrieve her and take her to his house. Jesus said, I will come back and take you to be with me. This is straight from Jesus himself. He's coming back. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. His word cannot fail. Now back in our text in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we read in verse 2 that meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For we will lay off mortality, put on immortality. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that is mortal may swallow up or may be swallowed up by life. In these verses, Paul refers to our bodies as a tent. The imagery comes from the form of, uh, in a form of the tabernacle, the tent in the Old Testament. It was the temporary dwelling for God to meet with Israel, but it was not meant to be permanent in Jerusalem. It was a snapshot, though, of for us in our bodies. God has prepared for us who love him. This temporary tent, this thing here, this flesh, will be inadequate to dwell in the kingdom of God. For it says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This, my friend, is what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that new body. And I bring this today because... We all suffer in so many ways in this flesh. I mean, even, to, even this week, I did something on my back and I was hobbling around for two days. <laughs> and so, I mean, this is just part of life that we live, unfortunately. That part of it, anyhow. But that, when we get to the point where Jesus is about to come again, this body will be inadequate. We'll have to have a new one, and he's going to give that to us. Now, the one who has prepared us or fashioned this, it says in verse 5, for this very purpose, this is very important, because do you want to know your purpose? It's here. Here it is. Here's a purpose for you. You were made for this very purpose to get a new glorified body, to be with Jesus and God the Father. What a purpose, right? I'm going to live with God. That's so exciting. The creator of the universe wants me to live with him. The one who created this whole thing is waiting for us, but at the right time. It's not, it's not like he missed the train or he missed this plane or it's like wait uh, it's a delay we're being delayed there's some stuff going on we can't go get our children yet Jesus you can't go get your bride um, there's some things going on I just got to deal with the Middle East you know so that's not how it works he has a plan and we read today in Sunday school that in, in Hebrews that it's not delay he's not delay he's without delay as in something is in the way causing him not to come he has a plan, a purpose, and he has a reason for the timeline that he has. 
but we're going to live with him for eternity. That should make us excited. These days we don't get a lot of teaching on the second coming of Christ for some reason. Don't know why. But I felt compelled to do that today. And you know what? If we read the rest of the verse, it says, God who has given us the Spirit, that would be the Holy Spirit, as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So he's given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of what is to come. That's cool. That's like a down payment, a deposit. That means that there's more to come. It's not done yet. There's more business to be completed. The Lord will return for us. Now, we're going to work a little bit backwards. So I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But before we read, you must know that Christ has finished all the work that is required or was required in order for us to be able to approach God in his holiness and glory. No one could stand before him until Jesus went to the cross and accomplished the work that he must have finished. And he said, it is finished when he was about to die. Thereby making it possible for us to not only enter the Holy of Holies, that is, into his presence, where he dwells, spiritually, we can enter in now. But in the future, we will dwell in his presence forever, physically. How cool is that? That is what he wants for us. To be where he is, to share in what he has. For that is the reason that we were created. It was so that we could share in that, that he would share with us. Those who have come to him by choice, not by some pre-programming that somehow compelled us to it, as if we were forced to love him. But we came to him by choice. To dwell with him eternally, that is what he wants for us. That's what he's waiting for. We're in a holding pattern, a waiting room of sorts waiting for the gate to be opened and Jesus to come to retrieve us to himself. Now let us look at 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26. It says, verse 20, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through a man. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Hey, that's you and me. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom of God, the Father, after, uh, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all things and all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. So in verse 20, Christ was raised from the dead, and he was the first fruits, referred to as first fruits, and those who had fallen asleep. The first fruits were from the Old Testament, where they would go out and they harvest, and they would get a little bit of the harvest and bring it back to the priest, and the priest would offer that up to God as first fruits. The rest of the harvest had not it was obviously needed to be uh, harvested, and so that's where we're at now. We're living in that harvest season until the end. The end, the uh, time is called the, the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also called the Feast of Ingathering. And that is in the end when the Christ comes to set up his kingdom here on earth, that we will dwell with him, tabernacle. We will be gathered in. So verse 22 and 23, we see Christ uh, comes to collect us. Then we will, then he will end, it will, it will end. He will hand over the kingdom to God, the Father, 
after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. Yes, uh, what you see now will not be a big deal. It will be a nothing burger. in the future. When Christ comes again, he will set up his kingdom physically here on earth. Everything will be under his control, and every knee will bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. And he will reign, and we will rule and reign right beside him. That's where we're headed. That's our final destination. Look up as the world says for your de- uh, as the word says. Sorry, for your redemption draws nigh. No more addictions. No more violence. No more thieving governments. No, no more taxes. No more pain in your body. No more tears. For the Bible says that He will wipe every tear from our eyes. That is what we are waiting for. For the time will come when God the Father says to his son, go and get your bride. Go and get my children. For the day has finally arrived. Then Christ without hesitation will come with the shout. And the trumpet will sound. And we which are alive at the time will be not preceded, or we will be preceded by those who have died. Those who have died will go before us. If you have loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord Jesus, then they will uh, be resurrected and you'll see them again. Excuse me. Their graves, they'll be resurrected from their graves to be caught up with the Lord, being changed into their new bodies. And we will go to be with him. Paul says that this should comfort us. This should comfort us. For that, we know that our sufferings here on earth are just temporary. My back problem is just temporary. I got to deal with this body a few more years. (laughs) Several more years. I don't know how many years. But hmm, I gotta wear special inserts in my shoes for another how many years? Before Lord, before either I pass on or Jesus comes again, and I hope Jesus comes again before I pass on. That would be great. But I'm not afraid to pass on, and, and neither should we be, because we know that where we're going will be with the Lord. So don't be discouraged because this world isn't our home. We're going somewhere else. We're just passing through. But we must press on. Believe in what he promised. Believe that he will receive us and he wants for it. What he wants for us is to dwell with him forever. Don't give up and start to slumber, as the Bible declares a few times. That we should not fall asleep. That we should watch and wait. But he waits patiently. As Peter says in 2 Peter 3.9, he waits not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Do we see that? Anyone. The word is anyone and everyone. There's a teaching out there that says that only a few select will be saved, and it's those people that have been pre-programmed to come to him. Some weird teaching that's going on out there. This says everyone. He doesn't want anyone to perish. This world is not our home. We're only passing through. Pilgrims on a journey. It's easy to get discouraged, oh, I know, when we focus on all the bad things in the world. For if we can only look past all of that to see what lies beyond on the other side. I was riding with a friend the other day, and he says, I try to look at the better stuff. I'm paraphrasing what he said. But I try to look at the better stuff. It makes me feel happy. So we should focus on the bad stuff all the time. It will make us very happy. And even Paul said in Philippians that if we think on these things, the good report, those things that uh, the people said, hey, you know what God did? He did something really great in my life. 
man, think about the answered prayers. Think about how God is. He's so good to us. Think on these things. And also, for where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. Think about what we can do to pile up some more treasures in heaven. Not that we're trying to earn something, like earn our salvation. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just following Jesus' command to love each other. And he says, where our treasure is, that's where our heart's going to be. My treasure is in heaven, and that's where I'm going to try to stockpile it. Do things for Jesus for that reason. Because when I get to heaven, I want Jesus to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So are you uh, beginning to grow tired? Are you discouraged? Maybe you just want, and you prayed, and you wanted the pain to stop. Or perhaps it's depression that is plaguing you. It hangs on, it makes you miserable. Or an addiction that just won't let go, can't stand it. All these things that our old body deals with living in this world will one day be gone. No more sin dragging us through the gutter. We will be free once and for all. I'm going to read a little bit more. 50, verse 15, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Verse 5. So listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory, and where, O oh, death, is your sting? We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Just like that, he will come. I can't snap my fingers. Ow. <laughs> anyway, just like that. <laughs> and we will be changed, and we will fly through the sky, and then we will be with Jesus forever to live with him. And that's what we're waiting for. That's, that should be what, what we are focused on. It's not too long. I know some people have thought, it's just, you know, they said this back in World War II, then they said this, you know, back in the Vietnam era, and then, you know, they said this, it's just Jesus coming soon, Jesus coming soon, they've been preaching it for a long time. Don't be like those in, in Peter who referred to the scoffers who said, where is the returning of the Lord? All things seem to be going as they have always been going. Don't be like that. Jesus will not delay. The Father has a timeline. As you can see, never before have the countries been able to just wipe out the whole entire civilization. Now they can. And before that happens, do you think the Lord wants that? No. No, he didn't. And if we've read Revelation, we've read the last chapter, we win. Right? So Jesus knows all about the things that we suffer all the things in life that we deal with. He knows how to take care of them also. And you may ask, well, why doesn't he? Well, you know, my, I asked why my sister wasn't ill when she was dying from kidney failure and from multiple health problems. And she, we prayed. We prayed and we prayed. And she had faith and her pastor prayed. And a lot of people prayed. And you know what? She died. Well, for me, that was a, quite a blow because, you know, I was kind of young in the faith and I, I believed that every, you know, they told me that if I prayed, you'll receive it, right? Yeah. So I, we prayed and then this, this happened. Well, we can't explain that. We can't explain everything. I know some people would like to try to explain everything. There's preachers out there that would want to, to have an answer for everything and, and it, it just isn't, it isn't there. But 
when I went to the memorial service for my sister, I was so broken up, I couldn't speak. So I gave a little letter I wrote to my aunt, and she did it for me. And one, the people got up there to speak. And one of the guys who got up there had gone to the church with my sister. And she said, he said, you know, uh, when I first started coming, uh, I met Lynn, and um, I thought she was a very unique individual. And that uh, it kind of amazed me that the things that she had gone through and was going through, but she was still continuing in those things. And even all, all the stuff that she was dealing with, she was, she was faithful to the house of God. They renamed her Faithful. That's what they called her Faithful. It wasn't Lynn anymore. It's Faithful. She was there when the doors were open. And she was helping to do things for the church. And he says... I, I thought to myself, well, what's wrong with me? And when he said that, I knew exactly, in, at least in my spirit, why my sister had gone through that. She showed herself to be so faithful, even in the things that God had given her. That you can ask, well, what's wrong with me? Yes, we all suffer a great many things. And it won't be long. I really believe it. And I think that if we look around, you might agree. It's not going to be much longer. He'll be coming again. So that's what we're waiting for. First Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. You must believe that. He does not ignore you. His ears are open to his children's cries. The worship team can come back. So in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will come and everything will be different. Everything will be changed. No more will we experience life as we know it. We should think of these things more often. And we should thank God that we have that amazing destination. And when life gets challenging and tough and people have prayed for you and you still got that back pain and maybe you still have addiction, maybe you still have something else. It's still there. Thank God that someday you won't have to deal with this anymore. You know, I'd like to say everybody right now can snap a finger and be totally 100% healed, delivered, sanctified, uh, set free, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and all everything else, and we never have any physical problems like that. But I'm sorry, I, I, I can't live in the real world where that, that just may not happen if I snap my fingers. So I'm not going to. But I'll pray for you, and we'll pray for you. We'll, we'll have the uh, whoever elders are here today, we'll have them come down and pray with you if you want. But let me pray for you right now. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the fact that you are coming again, and it won't be long. The trumpet will sound, and you'll come for us. And then we'll fly through the sky and be with you, Boy, what an amazing thing to live with God forever. It's that purpose that he has, that he wanted and he created for us to dwell with you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for that purpose, that plan. And so we thank you, Jesus, for that. And we ask, for Father, that you would come in the next few minutes as we worship you. We thank you so much, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration, Lord, because it's about you for you. So we thank you in Jesus' name.